You know, I hope everybody had a good summer. I know that uh, we have here at the university. Uh, our guys have done a really good job academically. Coach Fitz and his staff uh, have have laid out a, um, a plan for us to follow. And during the summertime, our guys have really done a nice job executing it. Uh, Rachel and her staff, we've had lots of guys that – really needed to change their bodies uh, over the course of the summer, which is not unusual when you have um, a lot of newcomers. So guys worked really hard to do that. You know, it's fall camp. Um, you know, I'm sitting here last night reflecting on it. You know, uh, I don't know the exact number of how many fall camps this is for me, but I know one thing, it's, it's for me, is the most exciting part of the year. Uh, you get an opportunity to – to take 110 young men and you, you throw in the coaching staff and everybody that's involved and you get a chance to create a team. Uh, and, you know, nobody knows what that team's going to be. Uh, you got to create your identity. You got to come together. Uh, and there's lots of things that go into fall camp. It's one of the few times that there's not as many restrictions uh, when it comes to the time that you can spend with your players. Um, just talking to you know, our team, our coaches, you know, one thing that we really need to focus on in fall camp is just hardcore fundamentals. Uh, you know, knowing what to do, how to do it, why it's important to do it that way. Um, you know, I've never been around a really good football player or a great team uh, if they didn't have toughness. Um, you know, physical, mental toughness, uh, it's something that uh, you've, you've got to train that way. You've, you've got to do it. It's got to become a habit for you uh, and something that we really need to focus on. You know, um, when you talk about winning football games, the first thing that you you got to be able to do, you can't beat yourself. You know, uh, General Nealon's maxims, you know, the team that makes the fewest mistakes will win, right? So uh, something that we've really got to focus on is, is we got to become a smart football team. Uh, got to know what to do. Um, Got to be able to do it. Got to be able to execute um, consistently and being able to do it over and over again, which goes back to practice habits. And that's something that we've really got to focus on um, in this fall camp. One thing to me is just just the ball, the ball in itself. I was doing a little bit of a looking at some uh, interesting notes um, this off season, and you know, if you if you're an offensive team and uh, you you don't turn the ball over last year in Power Five. You had a 73% chance to win the game. If you turn the ball over one time, it's 51% chance. So if you start putting all that together, uh, how important is the ball in itself? Uh, you know, so offensively being able to secure the football, uh, defensively being able to uh, to to be opportunistic to be able to get the ball off people. Uh, so something that we really need to focus on in this camp. You know, there's going to be lots of competition, um, really for probably it's going to be the most competition um, since we've been here. Uh, we're excited about that. I think our players are excited about it. Um, we've got to create some depth. You know, if you look across our, our uh, roster, uh, there's lots of talented guys. Many of them have never participated in a college football game or they've played very little. Uh, so, hey, that's why they came here for the opportunity to, to play for one of the best universities in all of college football uh, and to play in one of the best leagues. So, you know, the only way you're going to gain experience is to get out there and, and to play. Uh, but we've got 28 practices uh, before we play our first game. So they're going to have me, uh, lots of opportunities to learn how to play. So with that, I'll take any questions. transfer at this juncture and then also what's your uh, assessment uh, of the defensive line position in your increase you know there's lots of guys that that go into the transfer portal um, you know and and I've been a proponent of it uh, it gives folks opportunity to to find their way uh, you know so um, you know when when they go into the portal doesn't mean they're going to transfer so um, We'll, we'll let that situation play out, and we'll see where it goes. And then your assessment of the defensive line position there in camp? Well, we, you know, we've not practiced since the spring. We've got lots of inexperience. We've got one senior, one junior. Uh, we have lots of talented guys. Uh, we're bigger, we're stronger, we're faster. 
I think the guys have worked hard this off season. So it's a big camp to create depth uh, in competition there. Um, moving forward. Steve and then John. You had said in Hoover that you would – oh, I'm sorry. You had said at Hoover that you'd spent so much time last year trying to help the long-term development of the program that maybe you weren't as close to the – didn't get as close to the players as you wanted to. How have you gone about correcting that? Like, what specifically have you done, and how much of a difference can that make if you kind of know your guys a little bit better? Well, it takes time to build relationships. You know, the first time I ever walked in this room, I didn't know any of y'all, okay? And I look around now, I know most of you by name. Uh, and lots of you have relationships with. So it takes time to be able to do that. Uh, it's no different in with a, a football team uh, or a player individually, right? So uh, we've been here, you know, just based off time, naturally. Uh, you're going to have more of a relationship. We, we know each other. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm satisfied that our players know the expectations every single day. Uh, with whatever presents itself in our program, um, we know our we know our guys. We know um, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, and we've been able to to build on that uh, in this off season. John and Brent, uh, Jeremy, on on Fine Bob's show, you mentioned about the team need to have confidence in the fans. What did you mean by that? No, I didn't say the the team needed to have confidence in the fans. I said that our program needs to have confidence. Uh, it, it, one of the things, um, when you do something uh, a bunch of times over and over again, you obviously get pretty good at it, you know? So, um, you know, whether it's you're your playing right tackle and you block the same running plays, you know, if, you, if you've been there for three practices as opposed to to 300, you know, you, you gain experience and, and you get pretty good at what you're trying to get done. Um, when you get good at something, you gain confidence in it. Um, and looking at our football team, we have lots of guys um, that have played a lot of football, okay? Um, you're talking about Jawan Jennings, Mark West Calloway, Jarrett, you know, Daniel Batuli, Daniel Taylor, Nigel Warrior. There's lots of guys that's played a lot of a lot of meaningful snaps around here and guys who have a chance to be really good football players. Um, and then you look at some other parts of our team, um, whether they've been here for a couple of years in our program and they're, they've just now put their bodies in a position to physically be able to compete at a high level in this league or they're, or they're a true freshman that's coming in here for the first time um, and going to get a chance to see what big time college football is about. I have confidence in our football team. I have confidence in our, in our coaches, uh, the plan that we have, um, the way I've seen our guys work and uh, in the off season to either change their bodies, do what they're supposed to in the classroom. Um, you know, it takes a lot to, to be a good football player. It locks, takes a lot to be a good football team. And we have made a lot of progress in that in the last six months for this 2019 team. So when you do something over and over, John, you, you gain confidence, right? Uh, and you get good at something, you become confident. And that's something that we've got to do. We've got to develop more confidence as a football team and a football program. Coach, have, have you been given any kind of timetable on Solomon and, and Gibbs as you enter fall camp? And secondly, what's the plan for how you manage Trey Smith and what, what all goes as you move forward to start putting on shells and that type of thing? Well, um, you know, Aubrey and D'Angelo, you know, we, we probably have a really good idea about D'Angelo. Uh, he, he's going to red shirt and set out this year. Uh, I think moving within the SEC, um, that that's really – what's going to happen there. Uh, you just don't transfer from one SEC school to the other uh, without being a graduate transfer. And D'Angelo knew that when he came here. Uh, and he came here because he believed in the coaching staff and for his future development uh, in the game of football. So he's done a really nice job this offseason. A uh, big key for him is, is what side of the ball is he going to play on? You know, the guy can play either side of the ball, but it's important for us for the next nine months uh, to make sure that he's at the right position uh, so he can continue to grow and develop as a football player uh, so when he does get an opportunity to be eligible that he, he's ready to contribute. Aubrey, uh, we've not heard anything yet, so 
Uh, and hey, it, it could be tomorrow, it could be two weeks from now, but it, whenever it happens, it'll happen. And then Trey Smith, Trey, again, um, you know, Trey has expressed that he wants to play football. Um, our our um, doctors uh, have kind of collaborated with everybody across the country, a lot of specialists, to figure out a plan to enable him to give him an opportunity to be able to do that. Jeremy, obviously the, the offensive line has been a big storyline. It's just one position group, but it's, it's been a group that a lot of people have talked about after last season. How, how have those guys kind of responded mentally to last season? It's not fun to go out there and, and, and struggle and have to watch film of it. And, and how have those guys kind of learned from that? And, and you know, can that kind of bring a group together when you go through something like that? Well, I'm excited about our 2019 offensive line. Uh, you know, you look at these guys and when they walk into a room, whether they've guys that have been here for a year, two years, three years, you can see how their bodies have changed in a positive way. Uh, we've got guys that have experience that have played in um, a lot of games. We've got guys that, again, are new on campus and, and uh, they're looking for the opportunity to play, but we have competition in the room. Uh, we have smart guys. We have guys, to me, that that demonstrated in the spring some physical toughness or some f physicality. Um, but if you look at the group all together, um, you know, they've not played a lot together. We mixed a lot of different groups this spring, but I'm excited about the group and uh, um, how they're going to perform in this fall camp and moving forward. As you look at the forward to camp, what are some of the things you feel like this year's team is going to be able to do that last year's team wasn't able to do? Well, I'm not worried about last year. You know, that book kind of closed in November. We're worried about the 2019 version. Uh, and, and we're going to start writing it tomorrow or today when we report for camp. So uh, I know that our guys have a lot of goals uh, and expectations. So. Uh, we'll see how it plays out over the next six months. Just some final housekeeping stuff, Jeremy. Uh, Balin Buchanan was kind of, you know, limited throughout the spring. You know, what's kind of his status as you guys enter practice uh, starting tomorrow? You know, Balin is uh, he's a guy that didn't get to participate in spring, so uh, it's been day to day, um, and we'll probably hold him for the first couple of weeks and see where he's at in a couple of weeks. And just as a follow-up there, with Balin not being or being limited, what is kind of the, the, the star position kind of look like right now? Who are some guys that you guys have kind of penciled in to maybe get some early work there at the, the, the start of camp? Well, we, we teach everything conceptually on the defensive side of the ball. So most every one of our defensive backs uh, could play star uh, or they could play money. And, those, and both of those positions kind of go hand in hand our money positions usually when we have six defensive backs on the field. But, you know, Nigel Warrior worked it in the spring. Showed, so did Sean uh, Schamberger, uh, Theo Jackson, uh, Cheyenne LaBruza, uh, Tyce Fields. I mean, Bryce Thompson, um, all of those guys really could play it. Jalen McCullough. So we, we actually, when we go out there and practice, of course, you guys are not out there, but we rotate guys through during practice. So... You know, the first series we might go with a group and Nigel might play star. And then the next series that he's in, he might play strong safety and, and uh, Bryce Thompson might play star. So that's how we teach our guys conceptually. Um, and, and with that group, um, you know, with the defensive backs, uh, uh, these guys have lots of ability. Uh, there's lots of experience returning. And we've made some really good additions uh, in recruiting. And we've had some young guys that maybe didn't play a whole lot last year that have, have had really good off seasons. So there's lots of competition back there. Coach, after going through the spring with your two new coordinators, just how do you think the addition of Jim and, and Derek will impact you know, how you approach things and you know, maybe feel like you can step back and, and manage the whole big picture? Well. With um, with Jim and Derek uh, and T also, uh, you know, we, we had a really good coaching staff with the addition of these guys. Um, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I got the best coaching staff in the country. Uh, well, most of the people that say it 
you know, hadn't been a part of the, the staffs that I've been a part of, which has been some really good ones over the years. I truly believe the men on our staff, and I told them this this morning, when you talk about teaching, recruiting, uh, relationships, character, uh, all the intangibles that it comes to being a football coach, I truly believe that we do have the best staff in the country. John Wilkerson and Austin. Coach, are you pleased with the health of your team besides Trey and Balin, and, and are there many that are going to be limited as practice begins? Well, you know, when you train like we train, uh, there, there, there's a fine line, right? So you got, you got to push the limits and, and all that. So, uh, you know, when we go into fall camp, there, there may be a couple of guys that may be limited for the first couple of days uh, just to kind of uh, get them ready to, to practice. If you look, there, there was a study this past year in professional football. The first five days of, of um, I get not OTAs for them, but training camp, when it comes to soft tissue injuries. Um, with the NFL last year, it was the most reported injuries throughout the entire season when it comes to soft tissue. So uh, we gave our guys a couple of days off headed into fall camp because we had a great summer uh, conditioning and weight room program. We wanted to give a little bit of closure there, uh, give them a few days off to be excited about fall camp. Uh, so when we hit it, we'll hit it running. But there will probably be a few guys that, that uh, – might be limited to this drill or that drill, um, but nobody really we're holding out. Last few questions, Austin Corey. Coach, I know Jared's put on about 20 pounds this offseason. How do you feel like that helps him going into this year? And then also talk about Elante Taylor. Do you feel like year two as an actual defensive back that he's kind of just you know playing and reacting instead of trying to overthink things? You know, Jarrett, uh, along with a lot of our guys, has is, is really changed his body. Uh, I don't know if he's gained 20 pounds, but he's really changed his body um, for the good. Uh, you know, and, and some of that's with age, uh, but a lot of it has to do with our nutrition program, our, our strength and condition program, and, and really Jarrett's commitment uh, to being – uh, the best that he can possibly be. So uh, he's, he's done a really good job this offseason uh, from a leadership standpoint. Um, you know, and, and it starts in the weight room, right? So, again, and I, I'll say this, you know, um, I've never been around a good player at any position that didn't have some kind of toughness. And I think we all know Jarrett's a tough guy. Uh, so I think he's poised to, to have a really good year. Uh, starts with fall camp. Um, you know, when you're talking about Alante, uh, you, you know, this time last year, Alante, he didn't know a strong safety from a corner uh, or cover two from cover three. So, and he played in the first game, right? So we had 28 practices to get him uh, kind of ready to do that. Uh, again, this is a guy that, uh, you know, works extremely hard. Uh, he's, he's a perfectionist. Uh, there's not many days that don't go by that I don't walk by the glass out there and he's not out here doing something on his own. So, um, you know, again, with the fact that he's played a lot of football, had a chance to participate in the entire spring, um, you know, you would, you would expect him to have a, a good fall camp, and I know he's looking forward to it. Coach, one thing that Jarrett and Jake Fromm said in Hoover was that with Jim Chaney, they, they can go into the film room and even if they're not just watching film, like they can just like chat with them about football stuff and, you know, maybe 30 minutes, an hour. Have you noticed that about Jim Chaney? And what do you think is the value of that where guys can just feel so comfortable just, you know, to get caught in conversation for an hour or so? Well, working for Jim for the last six months uh, or working with Jim for the last six months, um, uh, He's really easy to talk to. Uh, he's a funny guy, has great personality. He's witty. Um, he's, ex he, he, he's really, really smart. Um, so I, I don't doubt that at all. You know, I've sat in his meetings with the, with the offensive staff, with the offensive players. Uh, he captivates them. Uh, he has a really good teaching progression. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. Um, and I believe in him. I'm sure our coaches believe in him and our players believe in him. So uh, he's a guy that's done it uh, really well for a long period of time. 
and a guy that just seems to get better uh, every year. Final question, Trey. Uh, Coach, is you, Craig Fitzgerald heads off a, another team to you after summer workouts. Can you talk about him uh, and the impressions he's put on you, especially over the last two years? You know, first of all, Craig's a team guy, okay? He is a team guy, which is very important. A lot of guys in strength and conditioning, they think that when they max down there that, you know, it's it's their game day. Uh, and, and it is to some extent, but Craig realizes that he's trying to develop football players. Um, and, you know, him along with his staff, who, who he handpicked, uh, have done a, a really nice job, uh, not, not just in just in strength and conditioning, okay. But to me, the with the mindset of our team, you know, you you, you kind of create the identity of your team in the off season, and and through the the strength and conditioning program. Nobody in our program spends more time with our players than our strength staff does, um, you know. So he, he he done a really nice job this off season. Um, you know, and he's a guy that I lean on uh, for a lot of things. Uh, and we're excited that he's here. Uh, and and he'll do a nice job with them during the fall also. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. We'll have Coach Jamie.